I'm really conflicted on this movie. Part of me wants to riff and make fun of the movie, because at this point that's pretty much my job. But at the same time, half of me feels bad for doing so. Why? Because the copy I have of this movie opens with this. I love that logo. I don't know whether it's the pretty graphics, the solid music, or maybe it's just the nostalgia itself, but whenever that logo animation appears, the movie I'm watching, no matter what it's about, automatically becomes more special. Sort of like when the Three Stooges wear a tuxedo. Makes them look classy, yes. Gets them into fancy parties, yes. But they're still gonna cause mass amounts of brain damage on each other with a pocket wrench. Fun fact, whenever someone posts a video of the Columbia Tri-Star logo to YouTube, I heart skips a beat. Case in point, the Swan Princess. In the night I do, you see what you dream. All your troubles are they what they seem. Look around you, then you may realize all the preachers The Swan Princess is a 1994 movie that may look simple at first glance. But upon closer inspection, it is surprisingly intriguing, particularly with the animation studio that made it. You see, it started with director Richard Rich, who began his career working for Disney. He's actually well known in Disney, having directed The Fox and the Hound in The Black Cauldron. He was later hired to co-direct Oliver and Company, but got fired from Disney right after production had already started. Not wanting his talents to go to waste, Richard was stuck on what to do. Eventually, he decided, you know what? I'll leave them. I'll make my own animation studio. And so, Crest Animation was born. Also known as Rich Crest Animation, and Rich Animation, apparently. Huh. Usually it's the movies I review that have alternate titles, not the studios. So, with an entire animation studio in his possession, the Swan Princess, loosely based on the Swan Lake Ballet, was Crest Animation's first theatrical motion picture. How did that do? We're doomed. Once upon a time, there was a king named William, who ruled a large and mighty kingdom. And yet, he was sad, for he was growing old and had no child to inherit the throne. Oh, it's this cliché story. Happily, a daughter was born. A princess. So King William here receives his daughter and names her Odette. Kings and queens came from all around to offer their gifts to the child. Among them was the widowed Huberta and her young son, Prince Derek. Aside from this being a reference to Disney's Sleeping Beauty, the scene does have a purpose, as King William and neighboring kingdom's Queen Huberta come up with a plan to... Derek and Odette would be brought together each summer in hopes that they would fall in love and join their kingdoms forever. Cuz... yeah, when has that ever not been a good idea? But corny romances will have to wait, as during the questioning... That's a real word, by the way, you can look it up. We are introduced to our villain, the King's Chancellor, Rothbart. His evil plan is to... Actually, I'm gonna let you take a guess. He was preparing to take William's kingdom by means of the forbidden arts. Would you really expect anything else? And if you're expecting the movie to explain why Rothbart wants the throne, then you're being silly. Despite calls for his death, the Enchanter was only banished. I'm not finished with you yet, Willy. Someday, I'll get my power back. And when I do, everything you own, everything you love, will be mine. So to recap, you are not killing him, he knows dark magic, and he just said he'll return to take everything you own and love. Hey man, you see how his back is kinda turned? But nope, his threat is soon forgotten as we cut to years later. <laughs> oh, here they come. Oh. King William and Princess Odette arrive at Uberta's kingdom, and Derek and Odette end up getting along about as well as you'd expect. Hello, Princess Odette. I'm very pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Prince Derek. Uh, uh, uh. 
Yeah. It's here we're subjected to our first musical number and... So happy you could come, so happy to be here, how I'd like to run. Well, not technically bad, is kind of tedious and a bit, how do I say, Disney fan service heavy. Not fan service as in that. I mean trying to appeal to Disney fans with an entire musical number that style doesn't differ from the classics. A fun tribute is one thing, but an exact imitation is another. So happy we agree. I think we've got a deal. Dad, it's quite a catch. This is my idea. This is my idea. Of a match. <laughs> oh well, at least the scene looks good. The animation was done using traditional hand paint itself. Now the way this works is the moving characters and objects are painted onto a dope sheet by hand, and the backgrounds are applied by attaching them to the back of these clear sheets. This is how a lot of earlier cartoons and animes were created. Likewise, that's how this movie was animated. The process took up to four and a half years to complete, and while not being anything special, still looks good. And reminds me of a lot of early Disney movies like Cinderella, Bambi, and Pinocchio. Which isn't surprising considering the film's animator used to work for Disney. Usually when an animated movie has a really large budget, you can tell that money was either being used in a different department or they were just flat out wasting it. But here, knowing how it was done, I can see every penny of that budget on screen. Over time, the plan works as Derek decides... Arrange the marriage. <laughs> What? You're beautiful. Thank you. But what else? What else? Is beauty all that matters to you? Derek? What else? I... uh... uh what else is there? So yeah, the wedding's called off at later that night. What else is there? She says, is beauty all that matters? And you say, what else is there? It was dumb, I know. No, f Sherlock. <laughs> Your turn, Prince Derek. I didn't know what else to say. Derek's as intrigued by that game as I am by this movie. Think. You must see something other than Odette's beauty. Oh, of course I do, Rogers. She's like, you know, how about... And then... I mean, right? Well, ain't he a simp! Alright, that's, that's... What What do you mean? The movie's not finished. Don't worry, it'll start looking up soon. See? There's the villain! So Rothbard stops the king's group in their tracks as he uses his magic to become... Oh, three inches taller! Ah! King William's captain. After getting word of the attack, Derek races to save Odette. He arrives just in time to be too late. King William? Derek, uh, uh, a great animal. <gasps> a great animal! Oh my, that's almost as intimidating as a great anything else! Where is Odette? Uh, listen to me, Derek. It's not. What it seems. It's not what it seems. Really? Cause it seems like you're dying. Oh, oh and I wasn't kidding earlier. King William never shows up again, so yes, Rothbart just murdered him. Haters, I hope you're happy. So anyway, we cut the swan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Someone posted a video of the Columbia TriStar Home Entertainment logo to YouTube. Don't let my little spell make you sad, Odette. It doesn't even last the whole day. As soon as the moon comes up... And that's how it works, 
every night. No, look, Odette. This sort of thing doesn't give me any pleasure. What I really want is, is your father's kingdom. Take it then. You have enough power. Nah, tried that already. So this is where Rathbard's plan gets really wrong. Once you steal something, you spend your whole life fighting to keep it. But if I marry the only heir to the throne, we'll rule your father's kingdom together, legally, king and queen. Yeah, considering how much older he is than Odette, this is a whole mountain of wrong. Never. <laughs> Where are you going? As soon as moonlight leaves the lake, you turn back into a swan. No matter where you are. I would make a joke here, but so far this movie's done something no other movie I've reviewed has ever done. Make me want to see how it ends. So we cut back to Alberta's kingdom as we see Derek and his cowardly friend Romley engaging in target practice with Fay Garrows and servants dressed as animals. You've looked everywhere. She's not coming back. The whole kingdom knows that. The whole kingdom's wrong. Odette's alive. When I find the great animal, Rogers, I'll find Odette. Fairy tale logic. Liven it up a bit! I want you to strike fear into my heart! Not you, Wesley! You're a rabbit, for heaven's sake! I love it when the movies I'm reviewing start riffing themselves. So this leads to, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, another musical number. Unfortunately, since the movie bombed at the box office, plans for a video game adaptation were cancelled. And it's kind of a shame, because it looks fun. Don't lose hope, Odette. Wherever you are, I'm gonna find you. So we cut back to Swan Lake as we're introduced to a turtle named Speed, a frog named John Bob, and a puffin named Lieutenant Puffin, all of whom I assume are in this movie so Mr. Rich can remind everyone he worked with Disney. And these are my best friends in the whole world. Mr. Lorenzo trudge along. Friends call me Speed. And John Bob. I have no friends, only servants. And they call me your Hannes. Yes, John Cleese from Monty Python. Oh, it really is him. Odd. <clears throat> so anyway, we're then treated to another musical number called Far Longer Than Forever. Far longer than forever I'll hold you in my heart It's almost like you're here with me Although we're far apart Far longer than forever, as constant as a star. And maybe it's because the other songs up to this point have been so wretched by comparison, but this song's actually not bad. Far longer than forever. Far longer than forever. In fact, although the movie flopped at the box office, the song was nominated for Best Original Song. Even if it didn't win, I say it at least deserves to be nominated. change at tomorrow night's ball. They're all coming to the ball! <laughs> Every princess is coming. Oh, <laughs> okay, 
I'm guessing it's only been a few days since every character looks exactly the same, but in that short time, Queen Alberta's called off all searches, assumed Odette was dead, arranged a royal ball, and sent hundreds of invitations to neighboring kingdoms. I don't think the rest of the kingdom looked that hard for her. What did King William mean? However, remembering William's words, Derek gets an idea on how to find the great animal. An animal that can change its shape. A harmless creature approaches. Then, suddenly, it's too late. Huh. I always suspected that Shang Tsung's nickname was the great animal. No oh, fear. You fly to your prince, we bring him back to the lake. The moon comes up, you change into a princess and... ...happily ever after. How will I find him? You don't know where he is? I don't even know where I am. I bet he does. Oh, that's a great idea! Just say, Monsieur Rothbart, I'd like to leave now. Do you have a map or something? <gasps> that's it! A map! A map! So Odette and her friends devise a plan to sneak into Rothbard's castle and steal a map. And if you thought we wouldn't get another song, then this movie hates you. Our team is shy, one green web-footed volunteer. No way, Jose! No chance! No choice! No fear! Though to be fair, this does lead to a fun action scene, as the animals work together to get the map and Rothbard's assistant tries to stop them. Okay, in regards to my previous joke, I couldn't find any proof that they intended to make a game out of this. But they should have! So now, with a map showing the way from Swan Lake to Derek's kingdom, Odette and Lieutenant Puffin prepare to head off and find Derek. Odette, I apologize for the way I've been acting. It's all right, Jean Bob. Please, Odette, don't make this more difficult than it already is. Accept my apology, please. Okay, I accept. Good. Now we can kiss and make up. Jean Bob. What? What did I say? What? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. John Bob thinks he's a prince and wants Odette to kiss him to break the spell. Aside from, I guess, being comic relief, it doesn't really go anywhere and it's just kind of annoying. Hm. All she needs is a little moonlight. Me, I have to be smooched. But hey, at least this scene was funny. Silence, you savage! <laughs> 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 Good luck. Have a nice flight. Remember, if anything happens to her, I'll have you whipped, flood, put on the rack, and then have your back legs fried in butter. So Derek and Bromley head out to hunt for the great animal as Odette and Lieutenant Puffin fly off to find Derek. Unfortunately, believing the great animal to be a shapeshifter, Derek mistakes Odette for it and tries to shoot her. Birds should remember the possum said, when there's no escape, you have to play dead. That'll put some distance between us. I hope that Pudgy Puffin knows what he's doing. You know, John Bob like can't want to get sucked out all his likeability. So Odette makes it to the lake just in time for Derek to witness the pretty animation. I mean, see her transform. Derek, I've missed you so. By the way, you found something you like other than my beauty, right? Let him come. I'll- No! He has great power. You must go! There must be some way to break the spell. Oh, there is. It's here we learn that the only way to break Rothbard's spell is for Derek to make a vow of everlasting love to Odette. Tomorrow night, come to the castle. 
Before the whole world, I will make a vow of everlasting love. Oh, Dad! I'm coming! But Rathbard learns the truth. If you want to stop me, you'll have to kill me. No, I don't think so. You see, you've forgotten one very important thing tomorrow night. There is no moon. <laughs> No matter what they do, I'm always one step ahead. On the other hand, Prince Derek's vow could ruin everything. I'm gonna have to deal with him. But how? Knowing that if Derek makes a vow to another woman, Odette will die, Rothbard comes up with a plan to use his magic to disguise his assistant as Odette to trick Derek. That's gonna take a lot of work, but it'll be worth it. Because when he makes his vow to the wrong girl, Odette will die. Then I'll finish Derek off myself. Wait, then what was the point of taking her hostage and trying to get her to marry you? In fact, didn't you say earlier? Once you steal something, you spend your whole life fighting to keep it. Then what was the- Ugh, who cares? Let's just move on to my favorite song in the whole movie. Up till now, I pull my punches. I intend to eat their lunches. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Not for me. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorite villain songs ever. Up to no good, I love plotting. Cause I'm so good when I'm rotten. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Wait and see. Wait and see. I'll become that nasty, naughty, petty, spiteful, wicked, wayward, way delightful. No more Mr. Nice Guy, that's not me! Thank you, thank you, thank you! It hurts me to lock you up, Odette. It hurts me deep. But luckily, Lieutenant Puffin has an idea. Water leaks into the dungeon, right? Well... If there's a leak, there must be a hole. We'll find the hole, make it bigger, and... <laughs> She's loose. <laughs> well, they better hurry. Looks like the royal ball's starting. So faster than you can say, STOP SAYING ALREADY! Another musical number begins. This princess comes from Colchester, where corn and cotton grows. She plays croquet and harpsichord and sews her own clothes. Antonia isn't- So how long is this song? Okay, next! Okay, speed will draw the gators away again. You'll get a running start and make a for that hole. If I can find it, and if the alligators don't chew me before I get there. So this leads to probably the best scene in the movie. Slow poke. So that's where Jeff Stunham got that from. You're the other white knee. So Odette's friends help her to escape and she flies off to Derek's kingdom. Unfortunately, she's too late as Rothbard's assistant arrives at the ball and Derek makes his vow. Make a vow of everlasting love. Realizing his mistake, Derek rushes back to Swan Lake just as Odette collapses and becomes human.
Once the Odette dies, better not show this review to Shadow or I'll have another Maria flashback. Derek's confronted by Rothbard, who uses his magic to become the Great Animal. You know, I can see why this movie became a cult classic. All that's missing in this scene is the voice of Christopher Lee in a red demonic bull. If you get this reference, you are awesome! The bull! Derek's bull! Yeah. Swim to the bottom of the lake and get the bull! So the animals retrieve and return Derek's bow and he finishes off Rothbard once and for all. Pretty cool. Can't wait till Michael Bay remakes this movie in live action, which I surprisingly wouldn't mind seeing. I only wanted to break the spell. I love you. Your kindness and courage. I always have. It took you an entire movie to realize that. Eh, don't get sad. With Rothbard dead, the curse is broken, and Odette comes back to life. Well. There you have it, everlasting love. How is there still four minutes of this movie left? I am ready. Oh right, we need one more comic relief moment from a character I'd much rather eat than listen to. What do you have to say now? Uh... That's what I thought. Yeah, sorry, John Bob. Princess and the Frog isn't for another 15 years, and I doubt Disney's gonna rehire Mr. Rich for it. And I kinda wish they did, because honestly, this movie wasn't half bad. Like I said before, the Swan Princess flopped at the box office, and to this day, people are really torn about the movie. Some have even taken to criticizing Crest Animation and calling this one of the worst animated films ever made. Okay everyone, this certainly isn't one of the best animated films, but compared to Food Fight, Elf Bowling, and every movie made by Dingo Pictures, it is not one of the worst. And I don't just mean the animation. Yeah, the story's cliche and has way too many musical numbers, but a lot of the action scenes are definitely fun to watch, and you could tell the filmmakers were putting their heart and soul into this movie. Since then, this movie's had nine straight-to-video sequels that many see as milking the series dry, and for good reason, as most of them are starting to look like Barbie cash grabs. And unfortunately, Crest Animation is no longer with us. The last film they ever worked on was Norm of the North, and the studio went bankrupt before production had even finished. And it's a shame too, because both this studio and this movie deserve much better. And you know what? I'd rather see a studio's first movie aim for the stars and not quite make it than just play it safe and go straight to video. Now if you'll excuse me, I think you know what's next to come. <laughs> 